So, we have a Honda engine here that had a pump on it. As you can tell, it's well loved. I don't really know what the purpose of this is, except I, mean, I guess the handle's broken a little bit, but okay. Um, it's been well loved. Looks like the dog got a hold of the, the handles here. Um, it came with a pump on it. The pump was not making pressure and it was cracked. Um, those are usually two things that are not known for being good for pumps. Um, also came with the key. I saved that. It's a little dirty. So I did because I bought a brand new one. And we're going to install it. This motor kind of runs. I mean it runs, don't get me wrong, it just runs very uh, poorly. I think at the very least the gas needs to be drained out of it or um, the car needs to be cleaned. Maybe just a general maintenance probably would be good. In addition to that, the tires are not on the bead and they're flat but it doesn't weigh very much so it's not too hard to pull even with flat tires. So that's good. So, what this video is going to be about is this Honda coming back to life and how to properly replace your pump. So let me explain. Obviously, this is a horizontal shaft engine. On a horizontal sh uh, shaft engine, um, you have your choice on uh, you know, a variety of pumps. Uh, they can get pretty large, but you also have to consider your engine and what it can handle, what size shaft it has. There's a lot of factors here. First of all, this is a 5 horsepower. It's a GC160. Yeah, GC160. Um, I mean, those are fine. I like them, but they're 5 horsepower. Uh, I would love to be able to put like a good 4800 PSI pump or something on this, but it, there's just no way. It just would not work. So what this is, is um, a 2700 PSI. The engine rating on it said that um, it requires at least 5 horsepower, up to 6 horsepower. At 5 horsepower it pulls 2700 PSI, at 6 horsepower it's 3100 PSI. So we are going to be at that 2700 level. It's a two and a half gallon per minute pump. Something you need to make sure that you do is you need to make sure what your diameter of, or figure out the diameter of your shaft. And if it's a short or a long shaft, this is a long one. A short one would probably be at right about here. Maybe a little longer. Those are harder to find, not too many pressure washer engines or even engines like this in general have that. The um, Excel uh, pressure washers, I think they are, they have that, but they're kind of annoying to find, but you can find them. So this is a three quarters. So you need to find a pump that will accept a three quarter inch shaft, three quarter inch long. Seven eighths is also a fairly common one. Those are usually a higher powered pump. So what I'm going to do first here is this. I'm going to rotate it around until the, the key can be placed in on the top. So now we take our key. We're going to want to clean this up a little bit. And I need to put just a little bit of anti-seize on it. If you ever have to take this off, you'll thank yourself for doing this later. Not a lot, it doesn't take that much, but I like to put this on there. It prevents rust, it keeps it lubricated. Like I said, if you ever have to take it off again, um, 
you'll be glad that you did that because taking a pressure wash or a pump off a pressure washer that's been seized on there, it's not easy. Sometimes you have to literally cut it apart. So now we take our key, place it in the slot. There we go. We find the appropriate orientation of the pump. Sometimes you can change it with your fingers. This one's a little hard. Oh well, we don't need to. And just line it up. Okay. So the next step is to figure out how we want to orient it. I put them like this. The reason why is the exhaust. I don't want the garden hose attachment or the pressure washer hose attachment anywhere near the exhaust because you can very easily um, hit your hose two or three seconds flat later you are um, needing a new hose. So don't do that. As you can tell there's not a complete seal around it which will allow water to get in there. Um, that's why we put the anti seize to make sure if water does get in there because well it's a pressure washer that it won't um, cause any problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a little time. It takes four bolts. When you replace the pump, sometimes they do come with bolts. I like to use the ones that came with it because there's a slim possibility of the threads being different depending on um, your actual pressure washer. So I put the old ones back on because it worked before. It's going to work now. And it's not like there's any real pressure on these bolts anyway, so you're not going to worry about snapping them. But let me go ahead and finish that, and I'll be right back. So, got that done. Now, this is something that just kind of really grinds my gears. Um, this isn't going to want to fit on there. And I don't necessarily understand. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to get a different one. I will be right back. Okay, got that all done. So, the hose that this person has is a heavy duty hose. It's not necessarily meant for this unit. So because of that, I had to get a special type of quick connect. I usually like to put a quick connect on it just because they're better. Um, but because I have to put an additional fitting to kind of accommodate the hose, um, I am going to be putting some Teflon tape on it. So, let's go ahead and do that. It, it doesn't need a lot. It just needs to have enough to, you know, make sure it covers it appropriately. And Teflon tape is cheap and easy. There's just two passes in there. Okay. Firm it up. Put this on. And there it is. Okay, so apparently the laundry has to be done, so if you hear something, that's why. Anyway, so put the Teflon on there, make sure it's nice and tight, not too tight. Anything that you need to screw into an area that doesn't have a gasket, you're going to want to put Teflon on. Another example is a gun. This um, put fitting needs to have another one because there's no gasket in it. Inside of the pressure washer hose, usually there's a gasket. Um, so you don't have to do on that one. Inside of the quick connect, there's usually one. But just kind of take a look at it and see. But usually the wand doesn't have one. Okay, so that looks clear. I'm going to take this outside, connect it to the hose, do that. Something to kind of go over about the first time you start using a pump is uh, they sometimes don't have a seal here. Double check if they do or don't. They don't put a seal 
go try the garden area, your local area, or shopping center, hardware store, or whatever. They usually sell those packs of like 10 or 5 or something, just for land. Ideally with the screen, you don't need one, but it kind of prevents, you know, useless stuff from going inside of it. And then when you first turn on the hose, hold down the trigger for at least a minute. Get all the air out as you can. You should do that every time just to prevent uh, air bubbles in your pump, but that's especially important when you first start it. Okay, so I got a couple things done that I'm not going to show because this is about pumps, not that. But replace the cord, um, do the oil, new air filter put Teflon on the end of the hose because it was leaking when I was trying to bleed it out. Let the hose run for a good two, three minutes with the without the engine on, as you can tell it's a little wet. Put the tires back on the bead, clean them up, they're full of air, and the plug is actually good. Um, now I'm just going to put it on choke and see what we can do about the actual turning on and building pressure. And then after that, if it works, I'm just going to clean it up and that's really about it. Let's go ahead and see what's happening. Everything should be good to go. That's how you properly choose and install a pressure washer pump on any horizontal shaft engine, more or less, of this type, uh, without the belt, of course. But yeah, if any likes, comments, questions, concerns, definitely feel free to leave a comment below. I will see everyone later, and definitely subscribe. Bye.